Welcome to the Anything for Sports podcast. My name is Drew Jackson. I'm here with Josiah Strauder, 2A state champion, scored 24 points in the state championship game, also plays for Vegas Elite EYBL, who made it to Peach Jam this year. Josiah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So I want to jump right into it, get into the conversation. Um, let's start with your background in basketball. Um, when did you get started? When did you really get an interest in playing basketball as a sport? Uh, I think I started playing basketball around like three or four. And I was just like, I would always have to practice because I wasn't old enough to play on a real team yet. And then when I finally got to play on a team, it was just, I just fell in love with it from there. So as a young kid growing up, did you have brothers and sisters that played sports? Are you the oldest? Uh, no, I'm not the oldest. I'm the fourth child out of six kids. Out of six kids. And yeah, they play, some of them play sports. So were there any brothers and sisters that you kind of followed in their footsteps, or did you pick it up on your own? I said I picked it up on my own. When you first started to play basketball, uh, what was the main thing that drew you in or brought you to the sport? Uh, just watching, just seeing on YouTube all the highlights and all the mixtapes from Slam and stuff like that. So were you the first person in your family to play ball, or did your parents also play? You know, my parents played. I think my mom played in high school, and my dad played too. Have you ever seen either of your parents play? Do you know which one's the nicest? No, they both can guard me. So, so let's talk about early in your career. Um, before getting kind of to high school, you know, where did your basketball career take you as you were young? When did you start kind of playing summer club ball, AAU, before you got to high school? Uh, I started playing with the Timberwolves, and then I started playing with the CM Bulls, and then from there, Sam Bulls, like, got my exposure up. That's when I came to play with Vegas Elite for my eighth grade year and made hoops, and I just stuck it out with them. Were there any pivotal moments or anything in that journey to Vegas Elite that really made you say, I want to play basketball, this is something I want to do? Uh, I just I really always just wanted to play basketball. Was basketball always easy for you? Did you ever have any challenges kind of coming up in the sport, or did you right away know, like, this is it? It was kind of easy for me. I was always, like, somewhat good at it. Never, like, too bad. When did you start to take basketball seriously? I said, like, fifth grade. I was, like, really wanted to do it for real. So when you talk about, like, a training regiment, um, you know, when you start to take it seriously, are you doing training on the weekends? Do you have a trainer? In the summer, I train, like, throughout the whole summer, like, every day in the gym. But now school starting back. I don't have that much access to the gym because volleyball is in there. But, like, when stack clears out, I'll be in the gym way more. So that's a lot of skill stuff in the gym. Yeah. Do you do anything outside the gym, like weight training, agility? I do it here and there, but not a lot. So if you said something that you need to work on to get to the next level, would you put in, like, weight training into yeah, that bucket? Yeah, my strength up and okay. my speed and stuff. Okay. Um, now let's talk about nutrition. Do you have a certain diet that you stick to? What type of stuff do you eat and not eat? No, I don't really have a certain diet. I just like eat the regular stuff, drink water, drink juice. I don't drink soda. So no soda? No soda. Okay. Um, so when school starts, you'll have your normal practices, stuff you do at school. Do you, do you do anything outside of that? Yeah, I'll probably like wake up early 6 a.m. to go practice before, like before school starts, then have the team practice after school. Okay. So now in school, coming into your second year, as a freshman, I'm going to Democracy Prep. You guys won the 2A state champion. Um, I think you guys were 22-8 and eight last year. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, you had 24 points in the state championship game. Walk me through last year as an entire season, like what that season was like, kind of building up to the playoffs before you got to state. Um, was it a kind of a straight path, solid journey all the way through? Were there any bumps or kind of rocky pieces along the way? Uh, it was officially a rocky season with all the stuff we had happened. People didn't like really like our school, they didn't like our coach and staff. And then the passing of Coach Mark, that really hit us all. So it was, that was like the main struggle we had leading up. So we just wanted to keep playing and win a state championship for him. Talk to me about Coach Mark. Um, what he meant last year to the team, what kind of that build up to the playoffs and the state championship was like and having to, as a team that was very close, um, and playing with some of his uh, kids on the team, you know, what it was like to have to keep your composure and, I mean, still finish the season out, right? You guys could have 
just let it go and said, hey, this isn't the season. We're just going to let it go here. But you pushed through and then ended up winning it. Yeah. Coach Mario was a great guy. Always happy, always energetic. Never let what he was going through bring us down. He was always there when we needed him to be. And with him dying, I just felt like we just had to win the state championship for him. So it just pushed us harder to win it. So as part of that journey, you mentioned kind of some of the, the rocky pieces on the way. Um, I think right before the playoffs, you guys lost to Meadows right before getting to state and ended up beating them in the state championship. So talk to me if you can think back kind of to that that game in the playoffs. You lose to Meadows, but you still qualify for state. You know, what was on your mind at that point, knowing that most likely you were going to have to see them again in the state tournament? Yeah, during the whole season, we lost to Meadows. We were, they were like went undefeated against us and us losing that last game like in the playoffs before state. No, we was going to have to see them again. It was like, there's no way they was going to beat us four times in a row, in my mind. So, therefore, I just went in like, I'm not letting them finish beat me again. So, going to that state championship game against Meadows, like, what was your mentality going into I mean, you, you came out with 24 points, so obviously you were in attack mode, you were ready to go. Like, what helped drive you to get you to that point to, to get up for the game? My mentality for real is just to kill. I ain't want to lose. And I just know if we, just to see us holding up the trophy and all, it'll make everybody else happy. So let's talk a little bit. Let's take a pause there. Um, let's talk about some of the challenges and kind of your life story building up to uh, to that state championship, but looking at outside basketball. Um, what are some challenges that you face personally outside outside of the sport? Personally, challenges I face, I say the biggest one was probably losing both of my grandmas at an early age. So talk to me about that. What did your grandmothers mean to you as part of your life and your journey? They really meant the world to me, I'm not going to lie. It was like two people I really love with all my heart. And just to see them have to go and not watch me get to the highest I could be, it just hurt me. What type of impact did they have on your life as far as like providing you motivation and keeping you going? They had a good impact because I just knew that they wanted to see me do as good as I could do. And I just wanted them to see me do as good as I could do for them. So is that something you still carry with you when you play? As you kind of just mentioned, something you think about is, you know, kind of doing it for them and yeah. helping hold you together? Yeah, I say I play for them for sure. So when you think kind of of all the different pieces of your support system, we're talking about parents, coaches, you know, talk me through some of those different elements, whether it's coaches, parents, family, who helps kind of build Josiah up as a player, who helps keep you strong and keep you going? I think mean, all the coaches that I've had really had an impact on my career and where I'm at now. But some of the main pieces would be like Coach Moog, Coach Sid, Coach Duke too, since that's my high school coach and not. I feel like those like those are the three main pieces. So let's talk about mom. What has mom meant to you in your life and as part of this journey? My mom, that's my twin. She mean like the world to me, I'm not gonna lie. To see her just to see her be happy for what I do, just like puts a whole different type of like motor in me to go hard. So kind of along those same lines, I know you guys sit down, talk about kind of the things that you want to accomplish, your goals. What are the things on that list? You know, you knocked off a state championship going forward through high school, college, professional. What, what do you have on that list of things you want to accomplish? I want to win three more state championships to finish out my high school career. I want to win Peace Gym go make it to the D1 college level and make it to the NBA and hopefully be a Hall of Famer. After that state championship victory, what does your mom say to you? What does she think, feel? Like, how did that? I'm sure she was happy. Yeah. But you guys had any conversations about, like, what that meant? We didn't really have no conversation. She was just, we were just making a lot of jokes, laughing and all that, just having fun, enjoying the moment. What do you think it would mean to her for you to get a full ride to a D1 program? I feel like it would mean a world to her. take a lot of pressure off her. She wouldn't have to pay for me to go to college. And I just get to go for doing something I love. So talking about goals and aspirations, talking about D1 and the next level, um, at the beginning we kind of mentioned weightlifting, strength training, talked a little bit about diet and nutrition. Um, what's something else that you think would impact your journey and that you'd have to do to kind of make it to that next level? I for sure got to get my body right and get, get my work ethic even better than right now, and then you can have a good diet, eat right, so I don't, like, get hurt, prevent injuries, stuff like that. We mentioned a little bit about your support system, um, the coaches over at Democracy Preps. Talk to me a little bit about 
coach in Duke. Again, coming in as a freshman, being able to really put your stamp on the team. Again, 24 points in that state championship game. You know, talk to me about his coaching style, his leadership, you know, what, what that's been like so far in this first year. Coach Duke's coaching style, it's a good coach. He's a good coach. People say he's a little crazy, but he really just wears his emotion on his sleeve. So it's like he's just a lot of energetic, and he really loves the game. He cares for the game. And he cares for his players. So having him as a coach, he he knows what he's doing for sure because obviously he won a state championship, so he knows what he's doing. And just for him to put his trust in all his players just to, like, do that, it, it was good. So coming off 2A state championship, now being bumped up to 3A, you guys still feel confident? For sure. I feel like we could get it back to that. Have you guys had any conversations about what that looks like? I know I talked to him a little bit. Um, kind of about being excited for that that next step in the journey for kind of you know, again going forward to, to capture a three A state championship. You guys think you still have what it takes? Yeah, we for sure still gotta get a little more better. Can't be the same as we was last year because we barely made it there. But yeah, I thought we could do it again. What do you think you guys need to do to prepare to get ready to go back to back? Uh, we could all get in the weight room, have our own, get our own skill set up, work on our own craft, and then put it back together for a team. So you mentioned a little bit uh, about playing and having a goal of winning Peach Jam. Uh, this summer you played with Vegas Elite's 15U EYBL team. Uh, you guys did qualify and make it to Peach Jam um, after doing really well in the first two sessions in Phoenix and Memphis. I think you guys lost to Brad Beal, but then ended up beating them in the, in the championship game to qualify for Peach Jam. I'd say probably that looking at how Peach Jam went, probably not the exact outcome you guys were hoping for, now, again, looking towards next summer, you know, what do you think you guys need to do and what are you hoping to contribute to get to that next level and to hopefully come home with a Peach Jam trophy? I feel like we just all need to buy in, lock in, play for each other, play hard, and just be dedicated to trying to win. But uh, me bringing it forward, I think I need to bring more scoring, be more aggressive to get to the basket, get my teammates involved, and play a lot of defense. So when you're looking at kind of those different traits that you bring to a team, whether it's high school or the club scene, um, what do you think are some of your best traits and what you, you do well? I feel like I can score pretty well. I pass the ball. I feel like that's my best attribute, passing. And then I can play defense when I need to. So are you, I mean, your team as of now, so the Democracy Prep Group, are you one of the elite defenders on you guys' team? For sure. I averaged the most steals last season. so. And that carried over to club in the summer as well? Yes, sir. If you were looking at your game as a complete package and something that you would need to win a 3A state championship and a Peach Jam championship, what's one piece you think that in this next year you can add to your game to really push you kind of over that hump? Me uh, Shooting the ball for me, I just need to like be more comfortable with my jump shot. I feel like my game will almost be complete with that. So starting basketball so early, kind of going through different bumps in the road, kind of on your journey to that 2A state championship and kind of where you are now, if you were kind of looking at kids that were in your shoes that are kind of going through some of those same trials and tribulations, going through that same journey, what would you, what advice would you give them? I'd probably just tell them, stay the course, keep pushing yourself harder and harder, use anything that they like, are trouble with as motivation to make it to where they want to go. So kind of to close and wrap things up, um, I want to make sure that people can find you, um, have access to your information. I'm going to give you a camera right here in front of you. I'm going to have you look into the camera and give us your Instagram handle and where people can find you. Uh, you can find me at, on Instagram at one and only Joe, one nd 0 nly underscore Joe. Perfect. And we'll throw that on the video and make sure it's right there so everybody can find you with the link and add that to the description. I um, want to thank you for joining us today. I thanks. think it was a great podcast, great interview. want to thank all you guys for joining us out there at the Anything for Sports podcast. Feel free to find us on Instagram at Anything for Sports. You can find us on YouTube at Anything for Sports TV. I'll talk to you guys later.